the classical era. Oh, what a glorious time period. A time romanticized by many, the days of royalty, lords and ladies. With glorious gowns and horse-drawn carriages forever etched into history, with beautiful paintings to immortalize anyone with the means to do so. However, this also meant having the means to get away with murder. Ah yes, the murder. Forensic science would have had a field day with this one. I can only imagine the press had this been a modern-day murderess. Daria Saltikova commonly known as Saltichika. The name became a synonym for bestial treatment of the peasants. Daria was a Russian serial killer and noblewoman from Moscow who became notorious for torturing and killing over 100 of her serfs, mostly women and girls. Only three of her victims were men and those are on accident. But let us go back to pre-serial killer Daria. Because her family was well connected to several other noble families, Daria married young into the famous Saltikova family, but was widowed by the age of 26. With her husband's death, she inherited a substantial estate where she lived with her two young sons and a substantial number of serfs, more than 600. She became the richest widow in Moscow. While she was married, no one had noticed anything special about her. She just seemed gloomy most of the time. She was also a very pious woman who donated a lot to charities and monasteries. One day, Saltikova met a young and very handsome Nikolai Toitchev. As she was getting older and was very lonely, the affair with him raised her spirits. However, she soon learned that Toitchev had a love affair with a young girl, and they were even secretly married in church. In blind fury, Saltikova nearly killed her unfaithful lover. Toyachev and his wife escaped to his relative's estate in Moscow and soon fled from the region. Out of revenge, Saltikova wanted to kill them. The opportunity was lost. Soon she started wreaking her anger on her serfs, mostly women. She hated them all. The younger they were, the more she hated them. She treated them as her rivals, giving her enemies no quarter. She tortured children and pregnant women to death by beating them, breaking their bones, throwing them out of the house naked into the frost, pouring boiling waters on their bodies, and many other vicious and bloody tortures. She didn't make a habit of killing men, only three by accident, although she tortured them in a different way. She killed the ones they loved. One of her serfs lost, one by one, three of his wives. Saltikova's cruelty had no simple explanation. She would become furious for no apparent reason. In the beginning, she would throw logs at her serf girls when she didn't like the way they were cleaning the house, for example. Then, transported with range, she would beat, whip, and torture young girls and women to death. She was by definition a sadist who enjoyed physically abusing her servants. Many early complaints to authorities about the deaths at the Saltikova estate were either ignored or resulted in punishment of the complainants because Saltikova was well connected with powerful members of the royal court. Complaints about her possibly killing those who worked for her fell on deaf ears due to her standing in society. After an uproar from many of the victim's grieving family members, 
Zoltykova was finally tried and convicted for only killing 38 women, a hundred fewer than in reality. In the summer of 1726, two peasant serfs, one who had lost three of his wives beaten to death on orders of Saltichika, fled from the estate to St. Petersburg, where they eventually brought a petition before Empress Catherine II. The Empress ordered the College of Justice to begin an investigation regarding the torture and murder. Catherine decided to try Saltikova publicly in order to further the Empress's lawfulness initiative. Saltichika was arrested in 1762. She was then held for six years while the authorities conducted an investigation. Most surviving victims and witnesses were afraid to give evidence. Saltichika was not admitted mad or ill. She was unrepentant of her terrible deeds. Even the priest whose mission was to make her confess to her killings failed to make her talk. She was absolutely sure she would escape punishment. According to forensic detectives, over the period of six to seven years, Daria Saltikova murdered by various methods 139 people, mainly women, including young girls aged 10 to 12. Catherine's Collegium of Justice questioned many witnesses and examined the records of the Saltikova estate. And although she was found guilty, the Empress was still unsure about how to punish her, as the death penalty had been abolished in Russia in 1754, and the new Empress needed the support of the nobility. On October 2, 1768, a sentence of life imprisonment in the Ivanovsky cloister was handed down to Saltikova, preceded by a civil execution ceremony on Red Square in Moscow. At a public beating in Red Square, she was chained on a platform for an hour in front of the crowd with a sign around her neck that said, this woman has tortured and murdered. She was then hauled off to live out her remaining years in the basement of a convent. Her sentence required her to be incarcerated in a monastery dungeon in chains and in darkness. A windowless wooden room was built for her, so for a long time she lived in complete darkness. She was under 24-hour guard. A nun would bring food and a candle. After meals, the candle would be taken away. In the imperial verdict was also the prescription that read, from this reclusion, take her out in such a place during church services where she would be able to hear one without entering the church proper. In the penitentiary cell, fully dark, Saltikova turned her back on the world for 11 long years. The Moscow cloister was notorious as a place where many women of aristocratic lineage were imprisoned against their will. The families would typically make sumptuous offerings for the monastery toward the upkeep of their female relation. It is here, often under the guise of mental illness, that secret female prisoners of the investigation department and the secret investigations bureau would be sent, typically involved in political and criminal cases. All of them were held in the stone sacks under supervision of the cloister sisters. After 11 years, in 1779, Saltikova was transferred to one of the monastery buildings. This room contained a window with shutters. One of her contemporaries recorded her conduct there. Saltikova would spit at curious spectators would revile them and shove a stick at them through the window. Whether her mental illness was a result of her solitary confinement or was merely aggravated by it is unclear. 
She died in her cell on November 27, 1801, at the age of 71 after 33 years of incarceration. However, some documents say it was the year of 1800 that she died. Well now, sort of makes you wonder what was going on behind the scenes of so many of those beautiful paintings now, doesn't it? Even in this day and age, most of society seems to be treated differently by their financial status. It would be reassuring to know that the days of secret serial killing sadists are behind us. Unfortunately, money talks. If you have a serial killer you would like to see featured here, please contact me through any of my social media or leave a comment here. See you next time.